Welcome back everyone. My name is Trap. Today I'm going to go over answering a viewer's question on how I set up Windows subsystem for Linux 2, specifically how I set up NeoVim and for Vim. And so we're going to just look at some a few quick setups to show you how you make it look the way I have it look on the screen. So from a Rima standpoint, which is the remote desktop client that I've used to connect from my Arch Linux machine into my Windows WSL machine, that works really well. The caveat that, that you may run into is if you swap your escape and your cap locks key like I do on both operating systems, when I do that remote connection, that escape key gets a little confused and the cap lock gets confused. So I have to fall back to the control left square bracket as my escape key. That's an awkward key binding for me. Be aware that if you swap your keys, you may run into the same thing. Let's review the Microsoft terminal settings to give you some ideas of what you can do. You select the, you select the settings and it brings up this dialog. So if you use visual code, this is going to be very familiar to you. So my default pro profile is Arch Linux and I'm going to also go select that profile and I want to take a look at the appearance. So in the appearance, I can change things like the font, the font size. So this JetBrains Mono Nerd font at font size 17 works really well for doing videos. From a work standpoint, I would probably have that font size down around 12 or 10, 11, something like that. But it works really well for, for um, videos. The one half dark also works really well. I'm going to show you why I've chosen that color scheme by using my TMUX session. So in this session, I have got I have a tab that I've ran TMUX in it. I've created the split, but you can see on the top, I've got really nice colors on my bash prompt. They're pastel, they're pleasing to my eyes. The background looks pretty good. Also, the very bottom of the screen, you can see the TMUX prompt, so that looks very pleasing to me. Now, I'm going to change it to the default settings, and you're going to see it doesn't look as good, in my opinion. So, when I go to the Campbell settings, and I save it, and I go back to that TMUX session, you're going to see we got a black background. That in itself isn't too bad, but my color prompt from a bash standpoint, suddenly starts to look a little old school, looks a little ugly to me. When I get down to the TMUX session information, this I just don't like at all. So I, I, I said, you know, this color just doesn't work for me. So I flip back to the one half dark. So we go back to the settings, change it back to the one half dark, and do your save. And so then we're back to, we're back to goodness. So a couple other things you can play around with. You can play around with the with the background images if you like to do that. It's built in. You can do it. You can also play around with transparency. I I played with all those things. I'm just finding that for doing videos and and the lighting that I have in my room that if I turn off the transparency, my 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 videos look a little bit better. Um, so let's get out of this stuff and we're going to go back over to the wiki really quick. So. From a navigation standpoint, I'm not, I don't use many of the built-in key bindings that come with Windows Terminal. There are a lot of them and you can customize them, but the one I will use is Control-Alt-1 and Control-Alt-2. So that's going to switch me back and forth between the tabs, which that, you know, it's kind of nice because I don't have to use the mouse, which is what I was really after. So what I'm going to do at this point is I'm going to I'm going to show you a couple things on my NeoVim setup and I'm going to show you some things on my Vim setup. So on the on the left side of my screen we're looking at NeoVim and on the right side we're going to look at Vim. So if we just hop into NeoVim, it's going to be a standard NeoVim, nothing fancy here. I am using Lazy as my package manager. I then take Lazy and I add to that uh, the Lazy Vim plugins, and then I customize that further with my with my own capabilities. So what I can do is hop into this thing really quick, and I can do any kind of command that you would expect. The way I have Vim set up, I'm sorry, Neo Vim set up to use Telescope. These are some of the defaults coming from Lazy Vim. They work really well for me. So if I want to just go, for example, take a look at the uh, Finders. I can just hop right into that, navigate. You can see my folds. So if you've seen other videos that I do, you know I use a lot of folds really quick. So it opens the fold up and it closes it. So that looks pretty well, looks good for me, all right? So if I hop out of this really quick, 
and we just hop into my YouTube directory and then we're going to edit the same index page that's on the other tab. But I'm, do, I'm doing this for, for visual purposes so you can see the difference between Vim and v, NeoVim when I do this. So we just hop into NeoVim and I could go to my wiki page. You can see my folds are turned on. I'm gonna open up the whole thing. And there's that same page we see in the other tab. This is what this page looks like in, in um, uh, NeoVim. So I can use my folds and I can use fold commands so I can fold things up, just you know, navigating around so I can I'm doing that at ZJ, ZJ, and if I open things up, I can navigate. So it's doing that fold, open, fold, move sort of thing. You can see if I hold the space bar down long enough that which key will come up, that's where that's coming from, okay? So that's, that's pretty straightforward. Now that I have, a, because I have a file opened in NeoVim, and because of one of the plugins that I'm using called Tmux Runner and Tmux Navigator, which are, I have another videos that I'm getting ready to post on that, I'm able to do a control L and I'm able to hop right over into the other Tmux session and I can hop right back with the, with the uh, control H. So I can go back and forth as fast as I want to just using that control H and control K. Right now what you're seeing is I'm editing the same file. On the left hand side of my screen, I'm using NeoVim. On the right hand side of my screen, I'm using Vim. The folds look a little bit differently, which is okay. But what's important to me is the keystroke navigations work the same. So if I do my control H and control L, I'm going back and forth. So I'm in NeoVim, now I'm in Vim, back and forth. That's made possible because of the Tmux Runner plugin and Tmux Navigator plugin that I'm using, which I have other videos on that I'll be posting later, later today. So I can navigate the same way using the Vim uh, folding command. So it's a Z and then the direction. So Z and J goes down. So that what that's doing is it closes the current fold, opens the next fold. If I navigate over to the NeoVim, I expect the same behavior. So Z, J, Z, down, J, Z, J, Z, J, you see I'm getting the same behavior. It just looks slightly different, okay? but it gives me that ability to use either environment when I need it. So typically on WSL, I keep this environment extremely thin. So from in, from in terms of the repos that I typically use, I have my production Vim and my production NeoVim on this machine, and that's the only thing I add. So I expect to be able to go into Tmux and expect to see the same behavior regardless of the tool that I'm using. So if I go back to my uh, and navigate down to my Vim setup, it's nothing more than lazy Vim with the lazy Vim plugs and then my customization. If we hop over to the other side and we navigate and we look down at plug, it's simply the plug package manager. What's making this work the way it's working is the Vim wiki plugin that I'm using. So we'll do a quick look at that file just so you see what it looks like. It's really straightforward. Uh, we'll go to my wiki direct or my, my Vim directory and we'll hop into we'll go ahead and use Vim and we'll go into the plug file and we're going to search for wiki. And so in this we're going to see two really nice plugins that Carl uh, Levang has written. Uh, I've been using these things for years. Wiki file type is the one that's giving me the syntax, the folding that you're seeing that's occurring, whether it's NeoVim or Vim. The wiki plugin is the plugin I'm using to do navigation. So if I go back to the NeoVim side, I can do standard navigation using the, the HJ and K, HJK and L keys as you would expect. <clears throat> but once I'm on a page or link, I can use the tab key to move around. That's built in behavior. I can use the shift key to go backwards. Okay. So it's the fold key that's opening things. It's the the folding commands that I've got, got set up. So if I bring up which key and I type a Z, you're gonna see I have a bunch of fold keys. So you can see that Z, J, and Z, K down there, that's the command. Carl is also the guy that I found that information from him and his work. So I use those and I found out they're really convenient to use so I can hop around really quickly when I need to. So one of the things that this plugin also does for me is if I want to, if I'm on a URL and I click on and I, and I press the enter key, probably not going to work on it. Oh, it did work. Okay, cool. So what just happened is my NeoVim environment running on WSL2 
just launched a program by clicking on or pressing the, the return key on the URL. That's built-in behavior of um, uh, Ubem Wiki. Now you probably noticed this is actually a Linux program. So this is not a Windows program. I have the option of configuring what program launches. So if I wanted to, I could have had it launch the Windows version of Brave as opposed to run, launching the, the Arch Linux version of Brave. That's just a choice. So I experiment with both ways just to see which way I like to use the system. But you can tell this is this is the next Windows because the, the screen looks completely different. If you notice the mouse pointer looks different, that's because this is an X application. You say, well, if you get rid of that, okay, fine. So back over on the Vim side, we've got these plugins that we're using. We just bring them in and it allows me to get that navigation capability that I want. So if I go back to my YouTube directory and I, I, I Vim the wiki index, which is the main page, and the folds come up automatically folded because that's what I've told it to do on the configuration. I open it up with Z open or ZR, depending on which one I want to use. I can navigate around. But the other thing that I can do with this is if I look at my videos posted, I notice I'm navigating with the tab key, which is what I wanted, but I'm expecting this to open up another page when I press on that page. It opened up another page for me, okay? This is all built into Vim Wiki. This is why I'm using it. There's other capabilities that this tool uses. Um, and you can find some spelling errors. So like, for example, I got a spelling error here, right? I just happened to notice, right? I can navigate however I want to. And that should have been the word agenda. So we get rid of this, A-G-E-N-D-A. -E Great, spell it correctly. Now there's that crazy key binding. Save the file. I didn't mean to do that. We'll go back up and we'll do a GS. And so there's, a, so that is the Git Fugitive plugin that just did that for me. So I can, I can make this commit and I can say, you know, fix spelling. And wrong keystroke. Get out of that, done, get push. Great, it's done. And so if we go back up to the top and make that the only page and we navigate down again, open this up, oh, hit the wrong key, go back to videos posted, and now we've got that update agenda. So if we hop back over to the NeoVim side, you expect to see the same thing. I do a line down, open up the fold, go to the previous videos, and agenda is now updated okay so this look and feel that you're seeing this is coming from the vim wiki plugin and the vim wiki file type plugin and you're and I, what i've just shown you is they i get the same behavior from neovim or from vim i had to take special care when i set up neovim and vim to make sure i was using the same key bindings a quick recap of of today's video is you see on the left I've got NeoVim running and I can do my navigations around using the control H control K so I'm going back and forth between buffers Vim Tmux Navigator is the plugin that I'm using to do that to do navigation between Tmux and between Vim or NeoVim splits by default that plugin requires zero configuration it by default it uses H, J, K, and L control keys. So if I just simply hold the control key down and I navigate, so it's a really fast. Um, it does wrap, and that's and I like that. And just remember when it wraps, it wraps as it transitions from one Tmux boundary to another Tmux boundary. It wraps into the last Vim or NeoVim buffer that it was in. So that works really well for me, and I find it works pretty nice. The differences in file explorers that you're seeing on NeoVim, I'm using NeoTree. On Vim, I'm using NerdTree. What I've done is I've made sure that in my key bindings, my key bindings between Vim and NeoVim are exactly the same. So I don't have to think about navigation. I just know that if I want to go up or down, I use the, you know, the J and the K key. If I want to navigate to the left or right, I use the control key. And if I want to close things up, you know, I get into the right window and I tell it only. So the keystrokes for me are exactly the same, okay? 
and I made sure that they work from a team up standpoint and they also make sure that they work on whether I'm in them or NeoVim. So that was very, very, uh, a very good way to do this for me. So if we go back and take a quick review of the NeoVim setup, it's the LazyVim plugin manager and you're using Lazy to start with and then you customize it. On the Vim side, I'm using Plug and it's just a bunch of plugins that are being listed. So if we do a quick one final look, we're gonna, we're gonna close out of all this stuff here and we'll close out of this one as well. You notice this is, for me, it's the same exact keystrokes. I go into my Vim directory, I've got an alias for that that just navigates me to that location. If I go into Plug, which is where all my plugins are sourced from, and I search for Wiki, I'm gonna find a few hit, Wiki, I'm gonna find a few hits. So I got the Wiki file type, which is doing the syntax highlighting and some of the folding. I've got um, Carl, I've got Carl's uh, Vim Wiki plugin, which was managing the Wiki, which allows the base default behavior gives you that ability to do the tab keys uh, or the shift tab key to navigate between links. If you press the enter key, it opens up a file. Um, my particular plug in here, this Vim bundle that I'm using for Wiki, Wiki, simply set the program name that I wanted it to launch when I ran a command. That's all it's doing in there. These bundles are very easy to use. If I take a look at um, Tmux, we'll find a few more plugins in here. So Chris told me he's done an excellent job with Tmux Navigator and Tmux Runner. I've been using those two plugins since about 2015-ish. Um, work, they're very stable. There's still active development going on with them. Been very pleased with what they do. The Navigator is that part that's making sure that I can navigate from within Vim splits or within NeoVim splits. When I bring Tmux into the equation, I get the same navigation experience using the same key bindings, which was very powerful for me. Um, my personalization, there's focus events, so you can tell Vim to what Tmux to do with events when, you, when, when events are occurring. Um, I, I use these as defaults. I, I, I put the plugin in and I don't, I don't really configure it. And then I have probably one more, which is my particular customization of the runner. The only thing I'm doing here is I'm telling the runner when I do an open, and I'll do it right now, so it's like open. I just told the runner to open. I said, I want a um, horizontal split. So think x-axis when you're talking Tmux. Horizontal means the x-axis was split. And now I've got another pane, and that was controlled by the Tmux runner. It opened the pane for me, and I told it, I want a horizontal split, and I want it 50% of my screen. That's the only customization that I've done to that. Thank you for watching today's video. I want to thank my viewer for asking me how I set up NeoVim and or Vim, specifically using my wiki. In the comments below, I will list plugins that I'm using. Thanks for watching again. My name is Trap. Have a great day. May God bless you.